Welcome back to Making Money Matter, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevens, and I'm your host today. Joining me is Iggy Tan. He is the Managing Director of Alltech Batteries. The ASX code is ATC. Alltech Batteries have got some really interesting, I guess, ways of, of, of uh, plugging into this new green energy revolution that we find ourselves in. And no, it is not lithium, ladies and gentlemen. It's something else, but I'm going to let Iggy t- talk to us about that. Iggy, welcome to Making Money Matter. How are you? Hi, Kerry. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, let's start at the beginning, if we could. Um, explain, if you could, to our audience, who are Alltech Batteries and why is it important that they should be taking notice of you right now? Well, Kerry, Alltech Batteries is an Australian company and we're listed on the ASX. Uh, But we've got a very exciting uh, project in Germany. Uh, Essentially, it's called the Serenergy Battery. It's essentially a sodium chloride uh, solid state battery. Sodium chloride, as you know, is uh, table salt. Uh, And solid state is the technology that uh, all batteries are heading to. So just to give you a a background on lithium-ion batteries, um, in a lithium battery, there is a cathode and an anode. And in between that, there is a plastic separator and a liquid electrolyte, which is actually flammable. And this is what's been causing problems with lithium ion battery fires. So the the lithium ion battery industry is trying to move towards solid state where they replace the liquid electrolyte with a ceramic piece, which is solid, and it allows the lithium to go back and forth. So that essentially is solid state. Our batteries are basically basically, uh, solid state batteries, but we use sodium chloride instead of lithium. When you say we use table salt instead of lithium, why does table salt work in a battery like lithium would in a battery? And and what you said earlier as well, sorry, that there's a lot going on in my brain at the moment, is because there's talk about lithium gets on fire and you can't put it out. Table salt clearly doesn't, but... Why does table salt work as well as lithium? Yeah, well, actually, if you remember your chemistry, Kerry, I don't. in your periodic table, uh, lithium uh, under so- uh, lithium is sodium. So sodium is actually a very reactive material, like lithium. Uh, the 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 atoms are, tend to be a little bit bigger, but essentially very reactive. And what we see today is uh, the onset of uh, sodium ion batteries uh, as an alternative to lithium ion batteries. Uh, but our batteries are totally different. It's, uh, it's uh, essentially a, a molten sodium battery. So maybe I can give you some background on, on what the benefit of our batteries are. Yeah. So as you know, lithium ion batteries prone to uh, catching fire. And uh, when you get a lithium ion battery uh, on fire, it's actually thermal runaway and uh, it gets to very high temperatures, and it's virtually impossible to put the the battery out. So in a normal fire, you can take the oxygen away, the the fire stops. But in a lithium ion battery, uh, it keeps going because it essentially uh, uh, generates oxygen at the cathode end of the battery under those temperatures. So essentially, nearly impossible to put the fire out. So that's one of the side of, uh, downsides of a lithium-ion battery. The other one is that it only operates in a very uh, limited temperature range. So as you would have heard that if when it gets to very cold temperatures, the battery actually slows down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at zero degrees, uh, the battery drops to 70% capacity because the liquid electrolyte starts to become very viscous. And then the third one is that uh, it has... Uh, generally a limited life, about eight to 10 years um, in in grid storage batteries. Uh, But we're looking at really batteries beyond that. And then finally, uh, we know the impact of critical uh, materials in these batteries. Uh, We've seen the price of lithium rise about five times now in the last two years. And that's putting a lot of pressure on uh, lithium ion batteries. There is also issues with co- uh, cobalt as an uh, ethical supply of cobalt, because as you know, 70% of cobalt comes from the Republic of Congo and there's you know, child labor issues and so on. And then um, 90% of graphite comes from China. Uh, so that represents uh, geopolitical risk where one country is supplying 
basically the major ingredient for lithium-ion uh, batteries. And then uh, there is also copper. As you know, there's a copper crunch. There's not enough mines being built to, to meet uh, the copper demand for EVs going forward. So essentially, our, our battery resolves all those problems. Uh, it's totally fireproof. Uh, we have a life beyond 15 years. We can operate a very uh, wide range of temperatures. We can go down to minus 40 degrees uh, and up to 60 degrees. And the best thing is that we don't have any lithium. We don't have any copper, graphite, cobalt, or manganese. We have salt. And the only ingredient that we have that is common to lithium batteries is nickel. So it's a salt and a nickel battery. Wow. So uh, potentially, I've got a lot of questions here, potentially this could upend the shiny interest in lithium if this is going to do what you say it does. I've got a couple of questions. What's the... Yeah, well... Uh, Go on. Yeah, it's, it's an alternative to the lithium battery. The lithium battery is a superb battery. So uh, it's not going to go away very soon. We need a lot of lithium batteries to meet the demand of EVs and also grid storage. Uh, this is just an alternative. There's a lot of other alternatives, uh, and we need all the batteries to come on stream uh, to meet this demand, particularly in the grid storage uh, sector. Why can't you use it in the electric vehicle market, the salt battery? Uh, we have purposely focused on grid storage because the EV market is very crowded and uh, there's a lot of competition there. The grid storage market is an interesting market. It's a nascent market, and it's expected to grow about 28% year on year. So it's been reported that $150 billion will be spent on the grid storage side by 2030. So this is an area that we want to focus in, a big growth sector. Uh, now, very simply, what is grid storage? Uh, essentially, uh, if you have solar panels on your roof, you're generating power during the day, uh, essentially, you are putting that power into the grid basically for free, and then you are actually buying it back at night uh, for, you know, 30 cents uh, per kilowatt hour. So if you had a, a, a battery in on your site, you can actually uh, charge that battery during the day and then use it during the night. So essentially, it's energy shifting. Now, the grid storage is a bigger problem. Essentially, if you look at the demand curve uh, during the day, the demand curve rises at about 6 a.m. in the morning where everybody gets up and they start making breakfast. Uh, and then the demand drops during the day and then it rises again uh, at 6 p.m. where everybody comes home and starts cooking and so on. So you get this curve that goes up and then down. But today with solar panels, we're generating power during the day. And so... Even at 6, 6 p.m. at night, where everybody's coming home, the demand goes up, we're actually uh, stop generating power because that's when the sun comes down. So this is a big problem for the utility companies, and this, this problem is called uh, the duck curve because it accentuates this uh, demand uh, that they have to cater for. So what they have to do today is get a power plant up and running, ready to to meet that short demand and then take it down when the demand disappears. It's very inefficient. Uh, and the solution is essentially battery storage in the grid. So if the utility companies have battery storage, they can uh, charge during the day and then discharge for the period that the demand goes up and, uh, and, then, and then just stop discharging from the battery. So that essentially is grid storage. Okay. What's the energy density of your battery <clears throat> compared to lithium or is yours better or worse or similar or? Yeah, we, we, our energy density is very similar to the LFP battery, which is the lithium iron phosphate battery. So what we see is a lot of the uh, electric vehicle companies moving to LFP batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, they're much safer than the, the nickel cobalt lithium batteries. Uh, they have uh, so they they can discharge the power, but often they don't have the the you know the acceleration of power that you need, say maybe in a sports car or a truck. But today they realise that 
a normal EV, you don't you don't need to go from zero to hundred kilometers in three seconds. Yeah. You just want to drive around the city. So that's where the LFP battery uh, is essentially coming into play. It it is it is old technology, but it's coming back. The the Tesla cars are all now moving to LFP batteries. So we're very similar energy density to, to the LFP batteries. All right. Well, let's talk about Alltech batteries and where you're at at the moment, because I'm talking to you in August of 2023. What I want to find out is, it's all well and good to talk about this, but how far are you away from actually making this, getting this into existence, into production, and 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 I guess revenue? Yeah. So we essentially, uh, we're not a research and development company because essentially we didn't come up with the technology. It was actually developed by the Fraunhofer uh, Battery Institute in Germany. They spent nearly eight years in development, about 35 million euros uh, of development. And in fact, they even have a pilot plan, uh, 25 million euro pilot plan operating to produce these batteries. So these batteries have been, uh, been tested. They've been produced for over years, uh, and we got involved with them through a joint venture. Uh, essentially, we have a joint venture to build a 100 megawatt plant in Saxony, Germany. Uh, we own 75% of that joint venture. Uh, Fraunhofer owns 25% and essentially our free carry. So this is our first project. We are now in the final stages of a definitive feasibility study uh, for 100 megawatts. Uh, essentially, our product is a 60 kilowatt battery and a one megawatt uh, battery. So the, the the battery looks like a C container. <laughs> you can uh, easily de- uh, deliver it uh, on site. Uh, you don't need a lot of installation. You can just drop it on the deck, plug it into your uh, grid system, and you've got one megawatt uh, available to you for charge and discharge. So essentially... Uh, we're well advanced with the DFS, and we're looking to uh, finalise that this year, and then uh, start to look at uh, funding the project uh, and getting it up and running. When you talk about funding, I know that the DFS isn't out yet, but um, have you got some some sort of idea around the the capex of, of the operation? Well, I, I think uh, it's fair to say it is a manageable uh, capex, uh, and and one. Part of the DFS is to make sure that we have an offtake for all the batteries that we're going to produce from this plant. So we are talking to uh, some uh, utility companies in Germany uh, that are already moving towards renewable energy. So they are putting something like seven gigawatts of renewable uh, power in, and they also need batteries for that to to, to compensate for uh, you know the charging during the day and that. So. Um, our plan is to get an offtake uh, with one of these companies uh, as part of the DFS, and that will really help with the, the funding process. Yeah, and in the funding process, <clears throat> well, um, it, obviously this is a joint venture with, I can't pronounce their name, in Germany. Uh, Fraunhofer, yeah, Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it. That's, that's obviously the focus for the moment. How easy is it to scale this up, uh, I guess, globally? Because it's a it's a very natural product, table salt. Yeah, so um, essentially we the joint venture owns the technology. It's exclusive. So, uh, uh, But on the funding side, uh, the funding will probably take uh, three components. The first component is probably grants. As you know, there's a lot of money swirling around in, in Europe. Uh, for these kind of projects, uh, as also in the US, you would know the uh, IRA Act, where billions of dollars are uh, available for uh, these type of projects, essentially green projects. Mm. Um, we are definitely a green project. We are in a in the application process to get a, a, a green certificate uh, with the uh, Germ- uh, a Norway group called Cicero. And essentially, they um, accredit projects around the world uh, with green status. And the reason we're green is we actually have 50% less uh, CO2 footprint than a lithium-ion battery. Well, you say, why why 50% less? Well, we don't have 
expensive lithium that has to be mined, cobalt, graphite, copper, and manganese. So it's for, for, for that step, we are already uh, ahead of the, uh, the, the, uh, the green footprint. Uh, we also will generate our own renewable power on site and we will access uh, green power as well. So that, that really puts us in, into as a green project. So essentially, the uh, first part is grants. We also will be looking at a debt component and then also an equity component. And of course, we've been talking to uh, many European banks and there's a lot of interest and essentially all waiting for us to just finish the DFS so that they can uh, start to look at funding. Speaking of that DFS, you said this year, I'm, uh, I'm talking to you in August. Uh, what yeah, you... uh, we, we're in the final stages of that. Uh, very exciting technology. Um, essentially, we have to make these batteries uh, at, at one every 45 seconds to put it all together from scratch, one every 45 seconds. So you would envisage that it's going to be a very highly automated plan with a lot of robotics. And virtually, uh, Germany is a great country for that. They, their industry, for the auto industry, have that sort of technology that we're really uh, harnessing. So uh, very exciting technology. And uh, we, we essentially can scale it up to uh, much larger gigafactories. Okay, so DFS is, is imminent. Yeah. I, what I want to find out is 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 a sort of a vision for when you can see this become a reality. In other words, you've got to go through the process. Are we talking um, five years down the track, two years down the track? Can you make it go a bit quicker? Well, well if, if we finish the DFS and we go through the funding process, there's generally construction. So, you know, uh, these days you can uh, factor in about 24 months in construction. Uh, so by the back end of 2026, we should hopefully have some product for flowing out of a factory. What about um, competition? What about other people? That Because you, uh, it, it's complex, but in a way it doesn't seem as complex as the lithium-ion battery. You know, as you said, you don't have the need for the cobalts and the, and the nickels and the coppers, et cetera, et cetera. It seems quite simple, or is there a secret source behind it that other people can't copy? Yes, I think the secret source is the ceramic tube. Um, and you would have seen vision on, on this interview of that ceramic tube. Uh, essentially, it's designed to allow the sodium ions to go back and forth. So uh, that's uh, through a solid phase. So that's sort of essentially the technology around these batteries. Uh, you talk about competition. Essentially, the market is so big and it's growing so fast that it doesn't really matter what type of battery. So you've got vanate, re, redox flow batteries, you've got uh, sodium sulfur batteries, you've got uh, our sort of batteries, uh, you've got so, uh, sodium iron batteries, and then you've got LFP batteries. So it doesn't really matter. The, the, the market is so big, potentially, and it's growing so fast uh, you know, all kinds of batteries will fit into the into the market. All right, Iggy, we're coming. Uh, we're running out of time. It it sounds fascinating. What I want to know, uh, really, for our audience out there, which is, you know, they're interested in in green. They're interested in new technology. Batteries are clearly everyone's talking about them. And you brought up a very good point. There is that issue of you can't put the fire out of a lithium ion battery. But what I want to know, what we would like to know, is. Why should we be sitting up and taking notice of of all tech batteries right now? Because there's a there's a little bit to go to get down the the path. Yeah, essentially, uh, we are um, maybe one of few uh, lithium ba uh, battery uh, stories in the ASX. Uh, again, very early stage, but uh, obviously investors that want exposure to the green transition and Exposure to batteries itself, uh, then Alltech Batteries is uh, is is the uh, the company for you. So yeah, I mean, as you see around the world, the, the, there is a massive push uh, for this green transition, and uh, and uh, Alltech Batteries represents a, a great investment. 
Oh, well, uh, as managing director, I know that, look, you understand the, the, the demand uh, curve out there for this sort of thing. I wish you all the best with it. It does sound fascinating. Uh, perhaps come back and have another chat to us. When the, when the When's the DFS sometime this year? Can you... You got a sort of timing? Yeah, uh, probably about quarter four, the start of quarter four. So I'll come back and uh, give you an update. I would love you to come back and tell us uh, all about the DFS when that's out. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, Iggy Tan from All Tech Batteries. The ASX code is ATC. What a fascinating look at how we can get greener using table salt. Who knew? Thanks, Iggy. Thank you, Kerry.